The rings of Saturn are a glaring indicator that the planet is rotating at an angle as they whirl around its equator. The belted giant spins in relation to the plane of its orbit around the Sun at a 26.7 degree angle. Since Saturn's tilt precesses, like a spinning top, at about the same rate as Neptune's orbit. Astronomers have long hypothesized that this tilt results from gravitational interactions with its neighbor Neptune. Saturn may have previously been in sync with Neptune, but according to a recent modeling research by scientists at MIT and other institutions, Saturn has since evaded Neptune's pull. What caused this realignment of the planets? The one carefully examined theory the team has is a missing moon. The team claims in a paper published in Science that Saturn, which now has 83 moons, originally had at least one more moon that they have named Chrysalis. The researchers hypothesize that Chrysalis, together with its siblings, orbited Saturn for many billion years, while exerting constant pressure on it to maintain the planet's tilt, or obliquity, in resonance with Neptune. Chrysalis, however, is thought to have been unstable some 160 million years ago and came too near to its planet in a grazing encounter, which tore the moon apart. The loss of the moon was sufficient to free Saturn from Neptune's pull and give it the current tilt. Furthermore, the team hypothesizes that although the majority of Chrysalis' body parts may have collided with Saturn, some of them may have stayed suspended in space and later disintegrated into tiny frozen pieces to create the planet's distinctive rings. Therefore, the missing satellite might shed light on two enigmas that have persisted for a long time. Saturn's current tilt and the age of its rings, which were once thought to be roughly 100 million years old, much younger than the planet itself. A period of advancement. Scientists propose the theory that Saturn's tilted axis results from the planet being caught in a resonance or gravitational connection with Neptune in the early 2000s. However, Cassini, a NASA spacecraft that orbited Sachin from 2004 to 2017, made discoveries that gave the issue a fresh angle. Giant planets like Saturn don't just tilt over on their own. Instead, something must knock them over or gravitationally pull on them in order to cause them to divert off course. The equator of newly formed planets is expected to be level with the plane of their orbit around their sun when they line up like spinning tops, as predicted by scientists. However, none of the planets in our solar system are level. The nearest object is Jupiter, with an obliquity or tilt of just 3.12 degrees, with a far more significant obliquity of 23.45 degrees, our home planet wobbles on its axis bringing in an annual cycle of seasons. With an obliquity of 26.73 degrees, Saturn's tilt is even more severe, but still not as extreme as Uranus, which spins virtually sideways at a 97.86 degree angle to its orbital plane. These obliquities have a lot to teach us. We know, for instance, that Earth's tilt was probably caused by significant encounters with other rocky objects early in the planet's history the greatest of which broke off and became our moon, based on geological data acquired during the Apollo missions. Physics researchers may investigate planetary tilts to comprehend the history of the solar system, much as archaeologists examine clay pots and bone pieces to put together ancient societies. Current tremors are proof of tremendous occurrences from the past, or maybe not so long ago, as a recent research argues. The biggest moon of Saturn known as Titan may be to blame for the planet's tilt, according to a team of experts from the Paris Observatory and the University of Pisa. They contend that the genesis of Saturn's tilt may be considerably more recent than previously thought. In the past, astronomers thought that Saturn's tilt was more likely to be caused by interactions with other gas giants than by its moons. According to the NICE model, a widely accepted explanation of solar system creation. The large planets steadily migrated outwards 4 billion years ago under the gravitational pull of smaller planetesimals and minor planets. This idea suggested that Neptune was the cause of Saturn's tilt, pulling the ringed giant over as it raced outwards into the Kuiper belt. According to the NICE model, 
planetary obliquities were predetermined long ago and have remained mostly constant ever since. Saturn's current tilt may also be explained by Titan's recent history, approximately 1 billion years ago. Titan's orbit may have been constant for billions of years, but according to their model, an orbital resonance with Saturn may have just taken place, altering Titan's orbit and causing a virtually upright Saturn to slide sideways. Without further data, it is difficult to determine whether model is accurate. But the potential of such a recent migration creates possibilities for the solar system to shift in the future. The obliquities of big planets are not established once and for all, but continually vary as a consequence of the motion of their moons, according to the experts. Though it won't change for around a billion years, I wouldn't let it worry you too much since the solar system, as we now know it may not be as stable or unchanging as it looks. This hypothesis, however, is dependent on a crucial unknown, Seton's moment of inertia, which describes how mass is distributed within the planet. Depending on whether matter is more concentrated near Saturn's core or at its surface, the tilt of the planet may react differently. Massachusetts Institute of Technology Professor of Planetary Sciences Jack Wisdom explains that in order to go further with the issue, it was necessary to ascertain Saturn's moment of inertia. The missing element. Using some of the last observations made by Cassini during its grand final, a phase of the mission during which the spacecraft made an extremely close approach to precisely map the gravitational field around the entire planet, Wisdom and his colleagues sought to determine Saturn's moment of inertia in their new study. The distribution of mass on a planet may be calculated using the gravitational field. Then, according to Wisdom, we look for methods to pull Saturn out of Neptune's resonance. When Wisdom and his co-workers recreated Saturn's interior, they found a mass distribution that matched the gravitational field that Cassini had detected. Surprisingly, they discovered that Saturn was situated near, but just outside, the resonance with Neptune due to the newly discovered moment of inertia. The planets may have been in synchronicity previously, but not anymore. How huge would such a moon need to be, and what dynamics would it need to experience in order to remove Saturn from Neptune's resonance? Simulations were performed by Wisdom and his colleagues to ascertain a moon's mass, orbital radius, and the orbital dynamics necessary to remove Saturn from the resonance. They come to the conclusion that Saturn's current tilt is a consequence of its resonance with Neptune, and that its escape from the resonance was made possible by the loss of the moon Chrysalis, which was roughly the size of Satan's third largest moon Iapetus. Chrysalis entered a turbulent orbital zone between 200 and 100 million years ago, had many near encounters with Iapetus and Titan, and then came too close to Saturn in a grazing encounter, ripping the moon to pieces and left a tiny portion to circle the planet as a debris strewn ring. They discovered that the disappearance of Chrysalis explains Saturn's precession, its current tilt, and the late development of its rings. It's a fairly fantastic narrative, but like any other outcome, it has to be verified by other people, says Wisdom. However, it seems that the missing moon was really a chrysalis waiting for instability. Thank you for watching. Do us a favor, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.